This is our supply where our warm water is pumped in from the boiler system, comes through the loops, through the floor, enters back into the return manifold and returns back to the boiler system to be reheated. This is also where we do our zoning. We simply connect a the thermostat up to these zone controls. They will open and close the loop and very easily allow us to have separate heating zones in each individual room if we choose to do that. We're going to get this tightened up. We're going to make sure all our loops are, are in. And then we're going to put an air test on the system to confirm that we don't have any leaks. 75, 79, and there's our 80 PSI. Now we're going to let that hold again for a full day. We will keep an eye on it. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll make sure that as long as it's holding, then we'll make our final connections back to the boiler with our supply and return tubing here, and that's all there is to it. It went very smooth. Uh, everybody was uh, worked as a team, and that's half the battle. Everybody's got to be on the same page. And once you are, it, it runs real smooth. So once we finish up with the panels and the tubing, we'll be one step away from heat and hot water in your house. I feel... So excited. <laughs> Can we take a shower? Yeah. A hot shower? It's been challenging, yeah. but I'm excited because it's like things are coming into the house rather than being taken out finally. And so I'm getting like, oh, we're getting closer to the end. You're putting it back together. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Congratulations. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> so for retrofit situations, going over or under an existing floor is a very good option. Well, getting back to this project, the electricians have been installing a few things that Jason will be following up on once his heating rough-in is all complete. And those are the vent fans that are needed for bathrooms, laundry rooms, and anywhere else where moisture might be building up. For new construction, it's pretty easy to take out the fan motors and just install the housings. And that prevents damage during insulation and drywall. They're designed to fit in just about any joist space with the adjustable brackets, and then electricians hook up the wiring. Then Jason or one of the other heating guys attaches the duct work that's needed to exhaust them. The fan motor and grill go on later when you're all ready for final hookups. Now obviously these fans are perfect for removing excess moisture in an enclosed area, but fans like this one can also provide a little bit of extra heat. Now this unit has not only the fan to take away the moisture, but also a built-in heater to take the chill out of the air. One nice thing about this is it's got a real low profile, so it's going to fit in a 2x6 joist space, which is great for older homes or remodeling situations like, say, a downstairs bathroom. They also have combinations that will work well in areas you may not go into very often, like utility rooms or storage areas. They have sensors that will turn it on automatically if the humidity is too high. We actually installed one underneath the concrete patio not that long ago, so take a look. Now one problem that uh, has existed here over the years is humidity can really build up. There's no windows anywhere, and especially with all the water leaking in, humidity would really build up. So that's the next thing we're going to jump on. Now we're going to be installing a couple of fans, both 110 CFM or cubic feet per minute, which is about the typical size you'd put in a normal bathroom. The nice thing about these is they turn on automatically when humidity hits a certain level. And you can set that uh, humidity level for whatever you want. It also has a motion sensor, so when somebody walks in the room, the fan automatically goes on. And you can set the amount of time that that fan runs for. You do that right here. You can go from a half a minute all the way up to 60 minutes. In terms of humidity, you can also set the humidity level all the way from 30% to 80%. So for instance, if you set it, let's say, 70% in the summertime, when the humidity level hits 70%, it starts to exhaust that moist air out of the area. Now typically, these get installed between the joists. Now you can screw them right up to the joist through these little eyelets. That's what we're going to be doing. Or you can use mounting brackets like these that slide into the side of the unit, and then you just screw the mounting brackets into the side. Pretty much the same way as you do recessed cans, if you've ever seen us do those. OK, Bucky, you want to? Put a few screws up here. Poke in the belly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping. Right there? Yep, go for it. Now one thing, not all joists are going to be spaced perfectly for the size of your fan, so you could add a little bit of blocking just to give you that right distance. Now for venting, you have the option on this fan to drop down to a four inch duct, or you can go with a six inch, which is what we're going to be doing. We'll get everything locked into position, we'll tape around here, and we'll be all set. Now typically, you would, uh, Take care of all your hookups, put your drywall up, and then install the grill. But because we aren't putting anything up on the ceiling, we'll move right onto the grill. Now, the grill itself has a couple of lights as opposed to lights in the housing. One is a compact fluorescent. We just slide in like so. And then there's another night light there. 
So with those in place, I can go ahead and put the cover back on. The nice thing about a compact fluorescent, very energy efficient, and it will last a long time. Now the grill has these two little clips here. These slide up into the uh, housing, and this is what holds the grill up. Now it works best is to attach one side first, let that hang down, so then you can hook up your lighting and your motion sensor. So I'll hook up one side, okay, and then grab the motion sensor and get him in position. Now with those guys hooked up, I just grab the other clip, press that together, and finish installing the grill. Very easily done. Let's get my tape on here. Go. All right, so once we get the power hooked up to that, it'll turn on when either the humidity levels are too high or somebody comes walking into the room. And the beauty is when it does turn on, it's so quiet you can barely even hear it. Well, the ones we're using here use quiet DC motors, so we'll be sure to show you those once we're all set to fire up the fans. Well, Jason has uh, put the last pieces of the puzzle in place, our expansion tank and our air eliminator. And I have to say, it, it's really a fairly efficient looking design. Um, we've done a few of these systems, and people will say, I don't know how many times I've heard this, it looks like the boiler room of the Titanic. You know, I think uh, just because of kind of the overall design as well, some of these multi-fittings just make the overall thing look very efficient. So with everything hooked up, then it's time to pump in the fluid you need to run through the pipes and transfer heat from the boiler to the rest of the house. Now what we're using is a mix of propylene glycol and deionized water. What the glycol does is lower the freezing point of the fluid to well below zero, so the pipes don't freeze if there's some type of outage. It also prevents corrosion, and if there's a leak, it has a very low level of toxicity. So Jason mixes the two into one bucket and pours that into another bucket that feeds the pump. You can monitor the progress as the fluid works its way through the mains. Now there's quite a few loops going around the house, so it takes a while to get all of those filled up, and you keep circulating it a while to purge the system of air. So with everything hooked up, let me show you exactly how this whole thing works. So the boiler heats the polyglycol, and there's a couple things going on. One is that through this pump, it'll send polyglycol through tubes into this smart tank. And what those polyglycol tubes will do is heat up the domestic hot water. So this doesn't have its own flame. It's not like a hot water heater. Instead, it's the polyglycol running in the tubes that will heat the water, and it's closed system. It pumps the hot polyglycol in brings it back into the boiler to do the whole process all over again. Now the same thing happens with the radiant floor heating side. These two pumps down here will pump all the polyglycol to heat the radiant floor tubes on all three floors. So it comes out here, this is a supply tube that comes up. These four tubes here and two tubes down there will pump polyglycol up into the tubes throughout the house and then all that gets returned back down through these tubes right here, circulates it back down, back into the boiler, to heat back up again, repeat that whole process all over again. So a couple things we mentioned in the system before this expansion tank. What happens when the polyglycol heats up and expands, this is here to accommodate that expansion of the polyglycol. And then an air eliminator. This is designed to purge any bubbles in the system so that we keep the bubbles out, keep the corrosion down, just makes the whole system work a lot better. And then one thing he hasn't hooked up yet is this little filler device. This holds about six gallons of polypropylene glycol. So when the system gets a little low, it just pumps it back in. You don't have to worry about coming down and doing that manually. And I guess one other thing is this little copper sculpture here Jason has going. This is actually uh, the line from our gas fireplace and from uh, our future barbecue. This is the gas line going to the system. All three of these will eventually get installed up there very neatly. So uh, he still has just a couple other things left to do. It's been a little bit chilly here the last couple of weeks, so this heat is feeling really good. We are going to keep it a little bit chilly, though, to make sure everybody keeps on moving. We're going to be doing more next time on Home Time. I hope you can join us for that. For Dean and the guys, I'm Miriam Johnson. Thanks for watching. Visit Home Time at PBS.org. we got more details about our projects, tips on owning and maintaining a home, and a great glossary of building and remodeling terms. Stop by and see us at PBS.org. Like you, GMC believes professionals work to a higher standard of craftsmanship, discipline, and innovation. GMC, proud to lend a helping hand to home time.
Vigibías. Well, here's a good option for covering a workshop floor, like we have down here in the lower level. This is called VCT, which stands for Vinyl Composition Tile, and it's mostly used in commercial applications where you need a really durable floor. First, we found the center of the room. We snapped our grid lines. With this glue, you have about six hours working time, with about an hour to let it set up. The first tile counts the most. That has to be right on, because everything keys off of that. And these tiles are 12 inches square, and they come in lots of different colors, so it's really easy to do some really fun patterns. We are using three different colors, and we're laying them in kind of a checkerboard pattern. It's very important to, to roll this stuff to make sure that everything sets up real well. Now, these tiles come with a factory coat of polish on there to make sure that they're protected during transport and installation. They do recommend taking that off and putting a couple coats of your own polish to finish it up. And you're on the wrong side of the world there, Jim. Yep, right. Kind of am. Okay, all right, here, let me get, let me get like this. Okay, one of us got a drop, Tommy. Don't oh, it. Oh, oh, it fell, fell, fell. Dude! Use it. You can still use it. Yep. Oh, for one. Ooh, ooh. Oh, nice. Oh, watch out, Bill. All right. That might be TV. Wow. <laughs> 